So welcome back to Rave Cartography. So glad that you're here with me. We're going to be talking about authority in general, as far as how to be your own authority, the whole point of this human design system. One of the things that I recognize that is helpful is listen to people you resonate to. So it might not just be me, uh, Ra, definitely. If you can go to the source and you can understand and hear him, it's very helpful to get it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. But again, there's nothing like experience. So if you um, are somebody who is, uh, you know, an emotional manifester, then you might be interested to hear it from an emotional manifester's mouth. There's other teachers definitely out there. This is about you becoming your own authority. And though no one is exactly like you, all of us are walking a path that someone else has already forged ahead at this stage in the game because this system has been you know, around for 30 years, more than 30 years now. So the thing that I want to make sure we're very, very clear about is that when you are defined, that's your nature, and wherever you are nurtured is where you are open. And because where we are open, we are amplifying the outside world, we're taking it in there. What happens is that where you're nurtured can overwhelm your nature. So what happens is in order for your nature to operate correctly, you have to have the correct nurture. You have to be taking in life in a way that's correct for you. Strategy and authority brings those two things, nature and nurture, into balance because we are both nature and nurture. You cannot separate yourself from the undefined aspects in your design. It always colors the way that you're going to experience life. And you as a nature, as your definition shows, is what gets to experience the nurture. Now, what happens when you're a child, when you're an infant and growing up? People look at your nature and go, ooh, what's wrong with you? Why are you like that? And then you think there's something wrong with, for their uniqueness that is you being expressed. And then you, you try to cover up your nature and you try to live out in the world of nurture where we tend to get homogenized and then that's when your mind is deeply conditioned to believe the story inside of your head about yourself and then you identify with that voice inside of your head you identify with the nurture and that's when everything goes haywire that's when everything goes haywire when you believe that that voice inside of your head is who you are our whole point in human design is to align you to the correct decision making that helps you honor what your role is in this life so that you can live aligned, aligned, aligned with the fulfilling aspects of you in the totality of that world of nurture that you're living in. You're living in the world of nurture. But your definition is who you are uniquely to be in this global tapestry of humanity. We are all one organism. And when you are not being conditioned, meaning you are not making decisions based on the adaptive strategies you learned in the first seven years of your life, then you're simply open. You're open to the wisdom that's flowing through you for the other. Your specificity lies in the dormant potentials, the conditioning receptors, where you're here to give to others that aspect of your wisdom. So imagine in your open centers, you're breathing in. You're taking in the prana of the life, the life experience of you with the other projector, of you in your response generator, of you in your impact manifester, of you with your global um, awareness of how you're here to filter the transiting field, reflector. When you're breathing in the prana of life through your openness, and it's not distorted by you making decisions because of what you think inside of your head about yourself, then it becomes wisdom. It becomes true wisdom. I'm hoping that makes sense. Awesome image. Yeah, we are one. Now the not self mind, okay? Your mind, whether it's defined or undefined, it tries to be the authority for your own life. 
It is so powerful and thinks it knows so best that it's really challenging for me to break through your mind's conditioning because it's attached to what it thinks its life should be and tries to control it. So all of us who are not awakened to our true nature live a lie of the not self and is attached to the I that it thinks it is. We're all under this global illness, mental illness that identifies with an I that is conditioned. So it thinks that the I that it identifies with inside of its head about itself is in control rather than the body that lives the life, that breathes the life. And your mind will say anything to attempt to stay in control. It will say anything, 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 anything. It will lie to you. And you have to see through these lies. How can you see through these lies? How can you see through the conditioned mind spell the spell of the Maya, the spell of the illusion, recognize the d open centers and what they say to you. You are not aware of how you appear to others. No one is more um, like this than the projectors <laughs> because they really have no clue about how they appear to others. Anybody who is deeply conditioned living in the not self mind is never aware of its belief in its own illusions, delusions, its lies, its falsities, and its inconsistencies. That's why you cannot trust it. If it makes a decision, when something doesn't work, it will just su suggest some other equally ridiculous way to deal with the decision. Oh, that didn't work. Well, let's try this. Oh, I didn't get that. Well, let maybe if I say it this way, I'm going to get what I think I want. And it's all driven by the fear inside of your mind about yourself. So my whole point in all of that just now is to help you understand that you are never here to make a fear-driven decision. That's the thing that Ra wants you to wake up from. No more fear, no more seven-centered homogenized lies. Okay, so the homogenized lies are, as a seven-centered being, we were separate. All the energy went up to try and develop our individuated, self-reflected consciousness. That is the Ashna. Now, right now, you and I, all of us, are nine-centered beings. So we are not that. We are unique formulas as an aspect of the whole. We are part of the aspects of wholeness that makes up the consciousness field. So by you being dedicated to your experiment here in this class with me, by aligning all of us towards the movement towards wholeness by living the unique formula that you are here to express. Our consciousness expands when we are aligned, when we are correct, when we are in balance with our nature versus our nurture. And here on this slide, I've put Ra's formulas and you can just just feel into his formula, feel into his frequency. When I say initiation, a design of needing to be first. Awakening, a design of commitment to higher principles. Structuring, a design of individuality. Brainwave, a design of penetrating awareness. Perfected form, a design for survival. Can you feel how what you're doing with this experiment is helping you to be awakened, shocked into awakening by his unique formula as he lived his unique life expression. Yes, I love this picture too. So in order for you to be your own authority, you need to make correct decisions in alignment with your design. And if I haven't express this to you before remember that there is so much more to the conditioning field that you may not even be aware of so that's why you cannot trust it as an example here's the dream rave design those are the dream rave gates that stay awake at night or be are open to conditioning at night and your dream wave design is different than your daytime design how the transiting programming field controls and homogenizes humanity is at night when you're sleeping so you're not even aware you're not even aware of the deepest conditioning aspects so that's why you cannot trust your mind's process. You have to be your own authority. And how do we be our own authority? 
we align to the personal individuated human authorities through either an inner or an outer process that is going to give the form its power back. It's going to give the form its ability to express and individuate its uniqueness. You're going to see in our authority statistics that most of the population are solar plexus. That means then that half of the world is designed to be patient and the rest of the world is running around amplifying that emotional wave and and the chaos that the emotional people put out into the world with their decision making gets magnified and distorted by everyone else. That's just one of the many ways that we are all pretty much fucked when we're not aligned with our true nature because we are susceptible to the conditioning that's happening within our being if we are not aligned to what is correct for us. So again, to recap, your internal voice is never your authority, whether the Ajna center is defined or undefined. Okay, that the way that you can distinguish the internal mind from the quiet hints of your splenic center, if you have that as a defined aspect. The spleen does not repeat itself. The mind will always repeat itself. Oh, we got to do this. We got to do that. We have to, we must, we should, because, and then it will speak to you in all of the openness, the open centers, the not self mind. That internal mind will try to be your authority in your life because of conditioning for the rest of your life. You cannot get rid of this voice. No matter how many seven year cycles you have, you will still be conditioned. Sorry. I know it. It's like, oh, at the end of seven years, oh, the light shines in, I'm awake, I'm alive. Nope, the conditioning is still there. Okay, the conditioning is still there because we're all adults. That internal mind is the spokesperson for the open centers. Remember, it will second guess your personal authority. The spleen says, go right. And the mind says, are you really sure we should go right? Because I saw over there on the left. Now, you can't turn that mind process off but you can watch the interaction between your mind and the open functions, the open centers. Your ajna is receiving information after your decisions are already in process and it happens so quick. You think that you're in charge, but that's an illusion.